Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Hello there, welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am here to scrutinize another Lindy Hop competition. This time it is a solo jazz competition at KLHC 2019. Let's get into it! And here we go. All right, friends, let's get into this. Ah, I love this logo, KLHC. Okay. I'm going to be looking for the one, the one dancer, and I'm going to look at all these people critically, and I'm going to tell you at the end what I was looking for. Shots fired! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> oh, this is a battle. I love that passive aggressiveness. <laughs> Shim Sham! <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> that was clever. That ending really was clever. Oh, wow. Good job, everybody. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you right now that this uh, particular solo jazz competition was very difficult to judge uh, in a sense of ability. Everyone could actually do solo jazz well. And I will tell you this, not everybody that enters a solo jazz competition can actually do solo jazz well. There's a little bit of objectivity that goes into what we define as solo jazz. Now I say we, meaning Jamin and my subconscious. I'm not talking about any other judges because m many other people will judge it and uh, sh look at jazz from a different lens. But specifically me, I've been dancing for 30 years, uh, doing all kinds of different dance forms. And when I got into swing dancing, I had to really study why the movements looked vintage as opposed to many of the other modern dances that I had done uh, throughout my career. So I didn't look like that guy who did hip hop, who's jumping into solo jazz, winning all the competitions because I could hip hop dance, but I couldn't actually look solo jazz. And deep inside, a lot of people would know it, but no one would say anything because nobody else could really dance, right? And I didn't want that to happen to me, so I became very um, interested in learning and, and discovering what it was that made jazz in a vintage sense look the way it looks. And so one of the key components that I look for in that core competency would be the isolation of the torso. There's not a whole lot of movement that goes like this in a lot of the vintage jazz dances unless it was maybe one gimmicky move that they would do in contrast to the generic jazz movements that they would do. So here's what I mean. So sometimes people would do moves like this, which is okay. Uh, sometimes they would do moves like this. But the reality is this part of the body, the boat, I like to call it, basically doesn't capsize <laughs> either way so that if people were inside of the boat, they'd fall out. It rocks a little bit, it tilts a little bit, but this part of the body is isolated. The main reason is because a lot of the dance influence of that time was based on tap. Um, the lower part of the body and the upper part of the body embellished what was happening on the lower side of the body. It wasn't the other way around. And so uh, in the modern dances, as you go from like late 1950s into the 60s, when people stopped dancing together in a very uh, public way, people were still dancing together, doing the hustle and things with their partners and clubs. But as a whole in America, people were separating uh, because of the rock and roll movement and people started to get into name dancing which is a little bit like the 1920s like animal dancing and things of that nature that came before charleston and so people would do things like this and they begin to start moving the torso more and of course that led to the the jamaican the funk movement the rap music the hip-hop uh, hip-hop and r&b movements which is not the same r&b movement from like the 1950s so don't get those confused but from that point on, when you think about late 1950s, early 60s, all the way to current day, we don't dance together and we move our torsos more. So if you can remember that as a whole, that's gonna be a key for taking any ingenuity that you have and placing it into a vintage context that will help you uh, make sure it's streamlined and uh, it looks good. So with that said, everybody could do this. I'm super happy to see that. Like I, I watch so many competitions and, and there's usually one or two people who can do it well, but everyone else kind of suffers or there's hip hop dancers or house dancers joining a, a solo jazz competition. But I will tell you, everybody in this competition nailed that. So what I had to do is go from analyzing if they could isolate the torso into who are they as individuals and what is different. 
What makes them look different than the other dancers? And can how is their timing? Are they just doing a bunch of choreographed sets? Are they uh, improvising a little bit? Or I can see that there's a little bit of vulnerability with the music. And uh, I take all of those factors into consideration when it comes to judging a solo jazz competition, aside from the torso being isolated. So I will tell you, here are my top three dancers. My top three. I, I'm going to tell you my number one, but my top three. Uh, let's see. June Jung. Uh, I believe it was Jung. So the last person. He was. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Jung Sup. He was my third place. And the reason I liked him, uh, obviously, he had the control part. He had the fight. This this dancer had this fight in him. I was just watching him standing in the back the whole time, like waiting for the next dancer. The audience, everybody's like, "Woo!" And he's just like, "I'm gonna I'm gonna beat this person. <laughs> I can do that too. I'm I'm about, I'm gonna take them out. I'm gonna literally come out there and slaughter them." <laughs> and that attitude is what I really love about these kind of battles because these aren't like sugar coated, nice little. Yeah, little gimmicky little competitions. This really brings the best out of people in a positive way, uh, in a way that I feel is better than the hip hop community that I came from. And so it's a little tame, it's a little PC, but that aggressiveness is a little passive, but it's still there. So he had that fight in him and this sense of control, but also this sense of like, if a person did a move, he's not just gonna let them do that. He's going to, okay, do that move and add something on top of it. And I like that. It almost makes the move that they did, the person he was competing against, irrelevant. Because it says, hey, not a big deal. I can do it too. I love that. Uh, the person that got second, the, the thing that I would say that would have raised this person to, to third place, uh, to second place, for me, would have been to take his time just a little more. If he could have taken his time uh, in a sense of not rushing. To use that aggressiveness to, you know, create more movements <clears throat> to match the energy of the music, but never to get too aggressive because then it no longer looks like the genre that begins to get into like hip hop battles where you can, you can clearly see that they do like hip hop or some other things, right? So that part's really hard to balance. You, you literally have to be like the Terminator on the inside, but James Bond on the outside. It's this weird dichotomy. It's just the way it is. So um, that's what I would have, if he would have done more of that, like restrained a little bit more, where I could I could not see that intensity on his face, um, then I would have said, okay, good. Yeah, he's a little bit higher. So my number two, <clears throat> my number two went to Yang, and she had uh, like the, the red dress on. The reason I loved her dancing is because the majority of it looked improvised. It looked natural. I didn't feel like she was putting on for me um, choreography to like set me up for her big move and then I'm supposed to cheer. I didn't feel those emotions when I watched her. I actually felt uh, like I was going on a little, I was going on a shopping spree. Like we were going to the market and she was just happy to go out on Saturday morning and to purchase some things and dance around a little bit as she bit into the ripest piece of fruit and the merchant looks at her like, you're going to pay for that, right? And she's just like, yes, and just happy. I just, I felt the joy of swing when I watched her dance. Yes, the control was there, but there was a, there was a flowing nature to her movements that was in contrast to everybody else's. And I don't know, that's just maybe the feminine nature of, of her dancing. I liked that. And I hope she never loses that. It's this very open playfulness that brought me into her world without me leaving my, my own. I felt like I could still be me and appreciate what she's doing. So she was, she was amazing. I loved it. I really liked her first set more than her second set. I think if she would have um, not, not to calm down on the second set, but just kind of did, did more just did a little bit more and had a little bit more confidence. And and some sometimes confidence is like, it's a delicate thing because if you have too much of it and it's 
and it's in contrast to other people in, the, in a negative way, then people will misconstrue it as arrogance. And uh, you don't want that. But at sometimes, uh, sometimes when you are competing, you want to have that. You kind of want to have an edge to you that is a little bit more confident, uh, but it isn't aimed at your competitors. It's aimed at the audience. Like the, you're teasing the audience to say, don't you know you like me? You do know it. You don't know it yet, but I'm putting it in your brain right now. You are in love with my dancing. <laughs> that's 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 really the the attitude I wish dancers would give me when I see them. It's a coolness. It's a cool confidence. And so I wish she had a little bit more confidence in her second set. And she could have done the same thing, but I think the confidence behind her movement would have made it look a little bit more sure and uh, more... Um, focused and fixed and, and 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 it wasn't it wouldn't have been as timid right i saw some of those movements were a little hesitant and, and I, I get it that that sometimes is nervous jitters but the more you do these kind of competitions the more confident you will be and the harder it will be to actually be vulnerable and to uh improvise instead of just choreograph so big shout out to yang she crushed it and my number one Dancer. This this dancer was great. I loved this dancer because he had the control. He also had uh, the timing in his sets that didn't seem choreographed the whole time. Right when I thought he was going to choreograph certain things, he deviated from that assumption and did something that was a little bit more organic uh, for him. And uh, he had the attitude. He had that intangible quality that said, these people can't dance. All of these people behind me that are, don't even look at them. He had that attitude. I'm not saying that's who he was or what he was doing or what he even said, but that's what I felt when I watched him. And uh, that goes to Kim. Kim was phenomenal. And I, I can't say enough about that balance because Kim literally had that balance. It's so hard to teach that balance, but I think a lot of that balance evolves as you begin to put yourself out there more in front of people where you're nervous and uh, you react to that in a very constructive way. So I don't know how long he's been dancing, but I will tell you those qualities are already there. So I can only imagine what's going to happen as Kim continues to dance and push himself because he's phenomenal. Phenomenal. One of the things that I would encourage dancers that are already good like that um, to do is to just continue to reach outside of your comfort zone. Ask the questions whenever you have a new idea. Say, would Duke Ellington like that? Would Duke Ellington's mother think that's appropriate? Is that a little too much here or there artistically? Will it fit in a vintage context? So you have to start doing that once you're really good because you don't want to bend the genre so much where you can't identify that it, what it is and, and that it's a vintage genre. Um, but you also don't want to become just monotonous where all of your movements look like everybody else and it's kind of a, a facade. You don't want that. So there is a healthy way of getting to that next level when, you're, when you already have fantastic dancing. And that is just to take some vulnerable steps out there to try things artistically and then analyze them from a vintage perspective, right? So great job, Kim. Amazing dancing. So guys, what did you think of this competition? I've, I'm glad they showed the names because I don't know any of these dancers. I've seen maybe some of these dancers on other videos before, but phenomenal, phenomenal dancing. And I'm glad that they put those names there. I really enjoyed that one. I love looking at videos from Korea because the level of dance is so much higher than anywhere else in the world. I don't know why that is, but I love it. And it gets me excited as an artist to uh, be able to observe their passion in their community. So are you solo jazz dancing yet? Are you in the game? Have you done it? I'm telling you guys, you're missing out on something. I know when I first came into swing dancing, that was my background. I danced by myself. I had no context uh, of like dancing with a partner, how that could actually work uh, in an improvised fashion. I didn't understand that. So. When I came into Lindy Hop, I already had a vast array of uh, movement in my body for, from years of dance. And I was able to translate that into a Lindy Hop context humbly because none of my moves could work uh, visually speaking. But 
uh, tonally they were off, but uh, in terms of inspiration, I kept that and I applied it through a different filter. So if you're coming from a different genre and you're getting into Lindy Hop, I encourage you to check out my courses below. I've got over 25 different Lindy Hop courses. Now, the great part is, is I didn't just include partner courses, but I included a lot of the vintage dances that you just have to know. You've got to know how to do the movements and make them look vintage. So I break a lot of that down so that you can fully understand it. And then of course, later you're just gonna smoke everybody because if you can already dance, you're just gonna be able to keep, you're gonna be able to display the thing that you've kept for so many years. So um, I encourage you to take advantage of that. If you're a swing dancer and you're just like, look, I wanna get better at it. And, and I don't really understand if what the formula is. It, it seems difficult. These dancers all look amazing. I don't think I could ever do that. Let me tell you, it's not, as difficult as it seems. Um, it's not easy because if it was, everybody would just do what I'm asking them to do. And they just simply go out there and do it. But it takes class, and then it takes a tremendous amount of social dancing. It takes class, and then it takes social dancing. The problem is, is when you take class and you're in a workshop type setting, if you're following, you're not actually learning how to follow. Because both of you are typically learning a move, a leader and a follower in class, and then you're trying to perfect that move in class which means both of you know what's going to happen next, which means both of you are actually leading. So it's really difficult if you're a follower to learn how to social dance by just taking a bunch of classes. A lot of times you have to end up just dancing with good dancers. So I wanna help you guys understand how to fix yourself as you're social dancing. Because there's some key critical things that if you know these things, you can translate everybody's language into these little principles and you will have a firm understanding on what they mean. Most importantly, how you can fix yourself is, is ultimately what you're wanting to do. So you understand what it will take to do that. So check out my fundamentals membership below if you want to understand what I know as a master dancer and the same method I use to not only just create new stuff, but to understand if something is working or not working on an objective level. So keep that in mind. I put in a lot of work to help you, so you can check that out below. But anyway, you guys let me know what you thought about these dancers in the comments section. Kim, uh, Jung Sub, and Yang. They were incredible. I encourage them to keep pushing, keep dancing, keep raising the level of, of swing dancing in your community. Um, and let me know what you thought of their dancing in the comment section. If I don't see you guys in one of my classes online, hopefully I get to hear your opinion in the comment section below in one of my new reaction videos. So have a great day and I will see you all soon. Take care.